Thank you very much tonight. Thank you, everybody, for, for coming. Yes, I'm the simple text guy. I still wonder what I'm doing at digital humanities conferences. I still struggle to define myself as a digital humanist, or in fact, define what digital humanities means. Um, and my day job is reading ancient Greek authors, one of which I'm going to be introducing you today. But don't panic, no need to leave the room, because I'm going to use this guy, Pausanias, writing about the first century, second century CE. I'm going to use him, our project on him, the Digital Periegesis project, that is run by Anna Fokai in Uppsala, as a way into thinking about collaboration. So there's going to be a little bit of Pausanias, but it's mainly going to be about the collaborations that we've been forging and reaching, and you know, basically trying to um, establish a particular way of working within this DH space where collaboration is so vital and it's great to see that being recognized in the theme of this conference. So the other members of the team, as you see, um, Anna I've mentioned, Brady Kiesling of Topos Text, Kiriaki Konstantinidou and Linda Talatus of the Swedish Institute of Athens. So that's one collaboration, that's the what we might think of as a, uh, the usual kind of collaboration in DH space, where you're working on a project with other members of the team, each with a different uh, specialism. But there are other collaborations that I want to be touching upon, using Pausanias as, as the route through. But I also want to perhaps get you a little bit excited about Pausanias too, but I'm going to do that in a kind of a off uh, kind of a, by a circuitous route, and that's going to make sense when you get to hearing about what Pausanias does, uh, by an image. So I'm using a map here to draw attention to two things, really. Um, this idea of non-modern ways of looking at space. I find this particularly an important, interesting and important idea, particularly when we are just so used to maps being in our contemporary culture, but a map giving us a particular image of of space through a particular, um, not only technical framework, such as Google Maps, but a conceptual framework, going back to a Cartesian view of the world, whereas actually these non-modern ways of viewing give us a different sense of space and how that, that sense was conceived, lived in, and the, use, and the opportunity to not only think about those non-modern ways of looking um, anew, but also to use that as a, um, as a point of dialogue with our own um, ways of looking in order to deconstruct, to challenge um, this kind of, kind of normative uh, framework through which we tend to view space. So that's the kind of the, um, the rather circuitous route into talking about a text. So this is where we are. This is Pausanias' Periergesis, literally um, a journeying around, journeying around Greece. And that's where I think that the, um, the problematiz problematization of this bird's eye view, Cartesian framework, really comes into its fore because what Greece is at this time is up for grabs, is, is a point of contestation in Pausanias' um, work. And also his dominant... Uh, view of space is hodological, is route based, it's a journey, an itinerary. Starting off in Attica, which we know where Athens is, crossing the Isthmus of Corinth, going around the Peloponnese in a clockwise direction, ending up in the kind of almost fictional, quasi fictional space of Arcadia, and then leaping back across to end in Phocis, where there's Delphi. Delphi is the center of the Hellenic world, the ancient Greek world. And this idea of journeying, of um, seeing space as a route, uh, has really been brought out by various, uh, various works of scholarship, non-digital. In particular, as you see, this very non-digital map at the bottom here that I've simply culled from Will Hutton's book on cognitive mapping. And it's that idea of uh, a different way of looking, again, at space that I find particularly um, important. But also going back to this original slide, the power of modern annotation to bring out those non-modern aspects. So this is, this is this map that has been annotated here, now being visualized to give us a sense of, to bring these two different ways of looking into dialogue with each other. And this idea of power of annotation, I think is, this is my first, if you like, stop on the way regarding collaboration, is itself, this idea of annotation, is, it has a very long scholarly tradition. What you're looking at here is um, Homer's Iliad, that's my day job, reading the beginning of Homer's Iliad here uh, in the bold text. Everything else you see 
are annotations and by different hands, a sense of, um, um, this is a medieval manuscript, the new technology of the day, as it were, trying to make sense of this other technology, oral poetics, by annotating it, by, uh, by providing the, uh, this kind of a, uh, an enriched text, using the, the, the new technology of the, the book manuscript. And I suggest that's a useful metaphor for thinking about this digital space. Um, another uh, collaboration here, um, this again, perhaps a kind of low level kind, you might think. So we are using a text that we got from the Perseus Classical Library. Uh, Perseus put all of their um, classical texts, not just Greek and Roman, uh, Greek and Latin, but um, other uh, ancient scripts too, online, not only for free to consult, but free to use and reuse. And that's what you're looking at here with uh, the XML. The important thing to note here though, our project wanted to use the Greek original text. That's also available on Perseus, but with, without any of that uh, TEI text encoding, apart from just a, a basic framework. So we are now going to give back what we've been working on to Perseus to, for them to make use of. Um, and so we get this nice virtuous circle of different groups building on top of each other. And we managed to do this annotation, or we, I should say we are doing this annotation using another um, uh, collaboration that I'll come back to at the end uh, from uh, the Plagios Network, one of the tools that was built when Plagios was a project called Reco uh, the, the tool being Recogito, this really easy to use platform for working with both text and images uh, that allows you to semantically enrich your text, particularly with the interest in uh, place. So here, here you are, the first place being mentioned here, Greek, uh, not uh, coincidentally the first place that Pausanias mentions. Uh, remember, that this is, in many ways, this is about what Greece means in this Roman world. Um, that, we, that we have not only annotated the, the character string, but we've then done this second step, which is to align it to a gazetteer entry. Um, thus, not only being able to visualize that place, and you'll see that uh, visualization in a minute, but under the hood to produce linked data. And the linked data aspect, um, which I think is a fundamental way of thinking about collaboration, I'm, again, I'm going to come back to it in a minute. This is dead easy to use. I can say that hand on heart because I can use it, and I'm not a technical person at all. Um, I can talk to some technical people now and again about stuff. Um, but generally my eyes glaze over RDF and GeoJSON and all this stuff. So I can use this, it's really easy to use. You can take, you can take my word on it. What it enables you to do is to uh, instantly get a map of the places mentioned. And here I just want to draw your attention to the use of this map already. Um, and again, we've got, of course, got the Cartesian framework that I w would hope to um, challenge. But the use of the map to visualize all the places that are mentioned in the first book of Pausanias. The first book of Pausanias is on Attica, that small bit of the Greek mainland, and yet look at all the different places that are mentioned in that first book. So somehow, in the course of Pausanias going around Attica, he manages to draw in the whole Greek oikumeni, the whole Greek um, and lived environment, as it were, across the Mediterranean. Another important aspect to our annotation, I've mentioned places, and you, you just saw an example of that, but one aspect that Brady Kiesling in particular has been leading on is contributing to, I guess, the, uh, the, the broader knowledge domain. And here I mean Wikidata. So using our annotations in Recogita, trying to align those where possible to Wikidata IDs for people, for example. Uh, and where there aren't, so this is a very good example, where there isn't a particular uh, Wikidata idea, minting a uh, Wikidata URI and creating that, um, using Recogito's uh, um, functionality not only to provide tags, but also this comment functionality you see there to provide information that we can then automatically extract and upload into a Wikidata environment. And here, I mean, if this looks a little bit too complicated for the ordinary user, we then are also, Brady, I should say, has also been um, supplementing 
you know, this additional resource. So you, um, you now have, um, and notice this is now an English translation of all of our annotations with all of the, um, yeah, obviously the un using the power of the web essentially, all those underlined uh, or highlighted words you see being able to link out to other Wikidata resources. So Wiki, uh, trying to not only leverage Wikidata but also supplement that um, using um, a kind of standard method has been also very important for the project. And here's another collaboration that's just emerging, and this is really, this is where my interests, I think, specifically lie, and that's to challenge that, uh, that I, not only, actually, it's, it's to challenge two views, it's both to, uh, to challenge that Cartesian framework view that you saw before of all the places mapped in, um, in Attica from a bird's eye perspective, but it's also to challenge fundamentally the itinerary view that is recognized going around Greece. So here you have, um, what we're using another functionality in Recogita, which is to um, draw connections or relations between different entities, and using that to produce uh, network visualizations, looking at how places are related to each other across the work. Um, this is work I'd done previously um, with, um, and on another project, the Hestia project, which is looking at places networked in Herodotus using the same principle, you, you can still access the maps, you can still access the, the publication that we did, but you can't access any of the data because this happened before Regogita, so now I'm happy to say that all of our um, annotations are now going to be publicly available, everybody can kind of scrutinize our choices for, for this, so that, I think that's already a good evolution um, in our world just over the, the course of you know, six or seven years. On the right is a, a network platform that we want to use called NodeGoat. Many of you in the room may be familiar with this software, um, and not just software, but also technical support. They specialize with hu humanities projects that are interested in um, exp um, visualizing, extracting, um, exploring uh, networks. Uh, we want to try to find, at in, as part of our collaboration of using this tool, we want to try to establish a pipeline between working in a Recogita environment, which is really easy, and um, focusing on the text, to then exporting that into, a net, um, into the node code environment where we can then do the analysis. And I, and I say this in, in comparison to another great project that's out there. This is, this is the Manto project that is all about mapping myth. And what I've done here, I've highlighted, so this is my annotations using an English translation just for, so, so you can actually read it, not um, presuming any ancient Greek knowledge in the audience. So this is my annotation of Theseus's uh, relations as encoded by Pausanias, or encoded by me reading Pausanias. This is Theseus appearing in a network diagram produced by Manto. What Manto are interested in are if you like, the, the general relationships drawn from myth. So Pausanias is a source, but their interest rather is all of Theseus and all of Theseus's journeys. Our interest is how that is represented in, a, in one particular text. So there's a difference here. So whereas Manto started with node goat from the beginning and worked out their conceptual categories within a node goat environment, we want to do the reverse in a way. We want to start off with Recogita because that's when we're, we're building our relations, our spatial analysis from the text, and then we want to export into a no-code environment. So that's a particular challenge, I think. Um, and now we're getting into this idea of the, the power of linked data. So one thing that you can do here, you now do have the scary looking Greek text. Um, here one word is highlighted, iconas. Um, that particular image is, appears in um, a database, a German archaeological database, Arachne. This is because Pausanias, as he's going around uh, the, the Greek territories, is talking a lot about the material culture of Greece. A lot of that material culture, as you, as you can imagine, has been identified and stored in various databases, Arachne being one of them. So now we're beginning to bring different resources into our textual domain to do, a, I think, hopefully a nice comparison. And here you have a, a map of Pausanias' journey um, through the, uh, the Athenian Agora, where he talks about this space. So we can start to bring text and image, uh, Pausanias' description with contemporary description. Um, and possibly for me, um, as a non 
a technical specialist, just to emphasize, the most exciting part of linked data. So that, was, that what you saw before was we had annotated that. There was this uh, database out there that we've been using, almost like a gazetteer, and then doing it within the Record Gita environment, annotating the icon, um, saying this is a, an object in space, mapping that across to what we knew was already out there, this uh, Oracle database. Here's an example where we didn't do that. Um, so the red dots are our annotations, and this white dot up here is not an annotation that we've made. It's coming from Perseus, uh, from too many Ps. This is coming from Pleiades, the ancient world gazetteer. So we're basically we're drawing in um, other data resources that, mention, that are mentioned within the same area that we're interested in. And what's particularly interesting here is this arch of Hadrian that is not meant, that we haven't annotated because it's not there in Pausanias. You can still see in Athens, it's a pretty big thing that you have to walk through when you go from the Agora to the, the, um, the temple of um, Olympian Zeus, also still uh, in Athens. Pausanias doesn't mention it. And it's that fascinating aspect of the representational um, view um, that's coming, for, coming from the narrative. So using linked data to surface omissions, gaps, um, to draw attention to, as I say, the representational force of the narratives, that really drawing upon the power of collaboration because these are, we're relying upon here of other resources that are curated within the ecosystem. And here are just last couple of slides. Um, those visualizations you're looking at before were being visualized in a, sorry, another P, uh, and this is peripleo. I should, um, maybe it helps if I explain what this is. So peripleo means journeying about. It's an ancient Greek for journeying about, the idea of being able to journey about uh, particular data resources. This had initially been um, a visualization that the Plagios project had used back in 2017 to draw attention to the power of linked data and, and how exciting it can be when you drew together different linked data resources. It's now being rebooted as a JavaScript library where you can point to your browser a particular data, linked, data, linked data sets that you are interested in. Um, and really nice for us, so um, being able to get the map view, but also the text view, and also down here, a narrative view. So this is not a simple chronology, this is narrative time. And I have been tagging, as we've been going, the, the various objects where Pausanias will attach stories to them. One of the, let's say, periods that he's particularly interested in is the heroic age. And here you get an instant view on the narrative line of all the objects that are mentioned with this tag, the heroic age, alongside them. And this is, this is really the point of mentioning Peripleo is that th that was a reboot. So I went back to uh, Ryan Simon, who was the main developer of, of Pelagios when Pelagios was a project. He's now independent, and I'm going to get to Pelagios in the next slide, in my last slide. But um, I went back to him because I really like the Peripleo visualization, and I wanted it, you know, because I, li I like the, uh, the ability to be able to get the spatial footprint of, um, of a text or of a... Um, of a data set, and that's that. Um, going back to him to reboot Pay Play cost four thousand pounds. I think I think I can say that say um, give a sum of money um, for the work. So I mean, he, he comes cheap, but you, know, you get you get good work from him. And what's really interesting is how that, and it's, of course it's published on GitHub. It's open source. That has now been taken up by other projects, in particular Gethin Reese. He's he's contributed this blurb and also the work done here for the. Uh, British Library's locating a national collection, where you get a mashup not only of one particular collection's spatial footprint, but a whole series of spatial footprints of different collections. So really using now the power of linked data, and, and so that's one aspect, but also this idea of um, software that's being built upon incrementally, and that's where I want to get to finally. That's all taking place under the aegis of the Pelagios network. So my the project that I'm involved in, the Digital Periagesis project, is a partner of Pelagios. We went to Reina to reboot Peripleo. Gethin Reese, another partner of the, the Pelagios network, liked what he saw and then took the software and built on it. And, we're, and it's now, you know, Peripleo is now having these different instances all around uh, through the virtue of um, um, diff, 
different people coming from different backgrounds, uh, not only humanists like myself, but data scientists, um, people from cultural heritage, being part of this community, learning from each other, not reinventing the wheel, but in fact, um, uh, building methods and resources tools that anybody can use in this incremental fashion. So this idea of diffuse sustainability through collaboration. That was a C word right at the end. Thank you. Thank you.